That concludes the debate on Scotland's national parks. It is now time to move on to the next item of business, which is consideration of motion 4702 in the name of Donald Cameron on statement of policy. And I call on Donald Cameron to speak to and move the motion. Uh, Presiding officer, can I formally move the motion in my name? And that motion is that the Parliament resolves that the statement laid by ministers under section 71 of the UK withdrawal from the European Union Continuity Scotland Act 2021 should not be approved. The opposition of these benches to the statement laid by ministers is based on two points, a broad general one, and secondly, some more technical arguments about government transparency before Parliament. In relation to the first broader point, these benches firmly disagree with the stated policy of aligning with EU law. The ramifications of Brexit have divided opinion sharply in Scotland and the wider UK, but the plain fact is the UK has left the European Union and has indeed now agreed a trade agreement with the EU. However much the SNP resent this, the fact remains we are outside the decision-making processes of the EU, we have no democratic input into the EU's institutions, and we have very little, if any, influence on the legislative choices being made by the EU. And yet, the SNP insists on the power to keep pace with and align with EU law. This is, of course, predicated on their desire to break up the UK and rejoin the EU at the earliest opportunity. Further, it is very notable that not once has the Scottish Government used the keeping pace power according to the report dated the 10th of May 2022. Not once. Despite the warnings of the Cabinet Secretary's predecessor in the last session of Parliament, who kept saying that the keeping pace powers were crucial and necessary, they have not been used at all. Perhaps more strikingly, there are no plans to use them in the future. The Scottish Government's report says so in black and white. Given that background, we are entitled to ask why not, and more generally, what is the point of continuing alignment with EU law? So for these very broad reasons, we ask Parliament to support my motion today. The second limb of our opposition is more technical, but equally important, and picks up on some of the points made by the Constitution Committee in its letter to the Cabinet Secretary dated the 26th of May this year, in relation to transparency to Parliament around the alignment process. The committee's view was, and I quote, that we do not have that transparency at the moment. In particular, these benches are concerned that the revised statement of policy does not make it clear how the government will make decisions about which EU laws to align with or not. We are concerned there is no commitment to set out which EU laws the Scottish Government has decided not to align with. And lastly, we are worried that the government's decision not to provide details of consultations, which include consideration of whether to align or not, is disproportionate and contrary to the transparency that Parliament deserves. For all those reasons, I ask Parliament to support my motion tonight. Thank you. I call on Sarah Boyack. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I want to start by making it absolutely clear that Scottish Labour supports alignment within the European Union, which is why we supported the Continuity Act. And for us, this debate is about transparency and the ability of this Parliament to scrutinise the decisions of ministers and the actions of the Scottish Government. And I have to say there's a bit of an irony uh, when uh, Donald Cameron suggests that parliamentary transparency is um, a technical issue. It's fundamental to how we operate. And the Cabinet Secretary's reply to the KIAC Committee following its consideration of the statement um, that we're looking at today, in our view, doesn't go far enough, although we did acknowledge he made uh, a couple of commitments to us. But this statement being proposed today does not give us adequate scrutiny on the decisions taken by ministers on where to align with the EU and where not. It will only focus on the areas where the Scottish Government decide to align with the EU. But MSPs, parliamentary committees and wider stakeholders must have the ability to scrutinise not just where the Scottish Government decides to align, but also where they decide not to align. An up-to-date website would have been a very useful and an easily accessible tool for MSPs, businesses, the wider public and environmental campaigners. And, and secondly, there's an issue about the issue of reporting on consultations, and we want clarity, and I hope the Cabinet Secretary will give us more clarity this afternoon. We, we mentioned this issue, the Rural Affairs, Islands and Natural Environment Committee, that we need a list of relevant consultations and we need to see what everybody says. 
and we did not get clarity on that. And thirdly, we do not think there is a strong enough commitment on the Cabinet Secretary on securing a memorandum of understanding between the Scottish Government and the Parliament on scrutiny of these matters. Simply welcoming our suggestion does not go far enough. There is no milestone for completing these discussions and no clear commitment to definitively have a memorandum of understanding. We need that. This debate is about transparency, and it is vital that we can do our job as democratically elected members. Um, the Scottish Government must be transparent and give us a clear commitment that it will be transparent not just on EU legislation where it seeks to maintain alignment, but also where it does not, because people might not disagree with that judgment and they might want the Scottish Government to align. There is an irony here again in that the Tory UK Government has been completely inadequate in delivering parliamentary scrutiny on trade deals and other Brexit related matters, where the SNP have stood up for parliamentary scrutiny. So I hope that we will get a commitment today to change this statement, because, presiding officer, we can't support it as it is currently proposed. We will vote against it today, but if the Cabinet Secretary takes on our points, we would support a revised statement that enables greater transparency and scrutiny so that we can do our job, so that we can make sure that we can see where alignment is needed and we can take this debate into the Parliament and have proper scrutiny of the Cabinet Secretary and his colleagues. Thank you. Thank you. I now call on Angus Robertson to respond on behalf of the Scottish Government. Cabinet Thank Secretary. you, Presiding uh, Officer. The Continuity Act was brought forward in response uh, to Brexit to ensure that Scottish ministers are able to protect the world-class standards that Scotland has enjoyed as a member of the European Union. <clears throat> and it bears uh, underscoring yet again Scotland was removed from the European Union against its will. And as we see on a daily basis, there are no benefits of Brexit. The Scottish Government is clear that we must remain uh, the Scottish Government is clear that we must remain close to the EU and continue to protect the high standards that benefit our country. The people of Scotland have spoken in a referendum and voted overwhelmingly for pro EU parties in last year's election. Their will is clear. That is why we will continue to align with the European Union where it is possible for Scotland to do so under the devolution settlement. We won't stand by while the UK Government is intent on a race to the bottom. The policy statement we are considering today is largely about the how. Our intention is to align where possible by subject-specific powers or primary legislation where necessary. For example, we use regulations under powers in the Environmental Protection Act to ban single-use plastics in June, a move proposed and scrutinised by this Parliament, as you would expect. Where powers are not available or would not allow us to align effectively, we will consider the use of the Continuity Act power. The transparency of decision-making by Scottish ministers is of the utmost importance. We will report annually where the Continuity Act power has been used, where use has been considered and where use is planned. Our policy statement reflects this, as well as setting out how we will meet other considerations required by the Act. How we will decide on the power's use is described, reaffirming our commitment to engage with relevant stakeholders, just as we do with other legislation. We take transparency very seriously, and our approach goes further than required for other legislation, as we will lay statements specific to the measure in question, so Parliament can scrutinise exactly why we believe we need to use the power. Following representations from the Constitution and Rain Committees, we have been happy to offer additional information to support transparency. We will provide an annual forward look that will reflect on the European Commission's legislative programme, setting out where the Scottish Government expects to prioritise alignment and where that might not be possible. And we have offered to provide information appended to all relevant legislative policy notes and consultations. This goes beyond the requirements of the Continuity Act and the information required for other legislation. This will allow Parliament to fulfil its duty of meaningful, effective scrutiny of the executive. The opposition motion is simply an attempt to distract from their party's calamitous Brexit and ongoing efforts to undermine Scotland's retained EU law and the devolution settlement. Our commitment to Europe remains steadfast, as is our commitment to transparency to this Parliament. I would advise the opposition to reflect on that in considering today's motion. Thank you. The question on this motion will be put at decision time. The next item of business is consideration of business motion 4833, 
In the name of George Adam, on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau on changes to this week's business, I call on George Adam to move the motion. Thank you, President Officer, and moved. Thank you, Minister. I call on Stephen Kerr to speak to and move Amendment 4833.1. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. Yesterday, the Scottish Conservatives requested that this Thursday's census statement be extended to one hour due to the vital importance of the subject and the extraordinary interest from members to ask questions on the census and its shambolic handling by the Scottish Government. It's worth bearing in mind that in a 30-minute statement, we would have only 20 minutes to ask the Cabinet Secretary questions. Now, later that day, the Minister for Parliamentary Business appeared to agree with our request when he shared with the Bureau his government's programme for the next few weeks, including a one-hour slot for the statement. Finally, I thought, the Scottish Government are moving towards welcoming transparency and scrutiny. More fool me, presiding officer. You see, it turns out that the one-hour slot was just, in fact, a typo from Mr Adam, and he does intend to keep the statement to only 30 minutes. There's no escaping the fact that the political decisions of the Scottish Government on the handling of the census could have far-reaching, damaging consequences for Scotland. My amendment would extend the day's business allowing the statement to run for one hour to accommodate as many members of the Scottish Parliament who wish to ask questions on this very serious issue. And I genuinely hope that the SNP members will support my amendment. If not, I hope Mr Adam will at very least apologise to members of my party and possibly others who were informed they might have an opportunity to ask questions on behalf of their constituents, but who may not now be afforded the chance to do so. And therefore, presiding officer, I move the amendment in my name. Thank you. I call on George Adam to respond on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau. Thank you, presiding officer. Meanwhile, back in the real world, uh, earlier today we discussed the statement at Bureau, and I stand by the discussion we had then, Presiding Officer. So, Presiding Officer, once again, I move business as agreed at today's Bureau. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 4833.1, in the name of Stephen Kerr, which seeks to amend motion 4833, in the name of George Adam, on changes to the business programme, be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. The Parliament is not agreed, therefore we will move to a vote and there will be a short suspension to allow members to access the digital voting system.